As 2017 began and I started looking ahead to what I wanted to accomplish musically, I realized that my interface that I've had since 2008 and my PC processor that I've had since 2014 have reached their end of life. I've since purchased a Focusrite Scarlett 6i6, but that's for a, a video for another time. The potential change in processor, though, got me thinking about what is actually necessary for a music production slash creation PC. So in this video, I'll go, and I go through what I think is important in 2017 for the components while you watch me swapping out parts on my rig. See if you agree with me. I realized that I had not given much thought about what components are really important for music creation before. Being a gamer for a long time, my first thoughts for PC hardware is usually graphics card. That is the side of symbol among DIY PC builders. The CPU and RAM would come next, maybe the case and hard drives after that. But for the purpose of music, I needed to start with a blank slate. Because of their history with music gear, I started my research with Sweetwater.com. They have one PC that is not touted as a video editing machine, and it has an Intel i5-6260, 8 gigs of RAM, though it is DDR4, and a 500 gigabyte 7200 RPM Seagate hard drive. That would seem to be pretty low overall specs for a gaming PC, so it seemed like I could use that as a starting point and from my bit of experience over the years, come up with a priority list of components. My questions were then these. What is the strain on a music production machine? It obviously isn't the graphics card yet. When recording, latency is the enemy. So you do need a fast enough processor to handle the data to and from the interface. You also need fast transfer speed of data to that processor. You then need to be able to write data quickly when recording. Lastly, if you're using the PC for effects processing, you will need RAM and once again CPU processing power. That then gives us a parts list with a rough order of priority. CPU and the associated motherboard, RAM, hard drives, case, GPU. Let's start with the CPU and motherboard. When checking out motherboards, look for the number of USB 2 and 3 USB ports. You'll want higher speed SATA transfer rates as well. Those are the connections that will move your data around the system. Obviously budget plays a big part of this, but you can save some money by steering away from some of the RGB lighting and overclocking capabilities as those are nice, but will add to the cost. Keep in mind you'll need to match the socket type of the CPU and motherboard. For an example of doing some balancing between price and performance, I've been running an AMD FX6100 for the past five years, and it, and it is only recently that I've begun looking for a new one. Currently at $100 CPU, it is when gaming that I really notice the age. For myself, I'm leaning toward an Intel processor based on what people are doing in gaming, but at the time of this recording, I just got a hand-me-down AMD FX8350 and will have no problem using it for even my gaming needs. Another aspect to this component is that you will need to keep it cool and quiet, so do not forget the CPU cooler. You might be tempted to use the stock cooler, but for 20 to 30 bucks, you can get something like the Cooler Master EVO, which you can run with a much lower fan speed. This makes it much quieter, giving off less noise when recording. Water is an option, but assuming you are watching this because you are new to PC building, it is a more advanced and expensive cooling option. RAM is next, and this is one area where you can probably cannot buy too much but this will also depend a lot on your use of plugins. If you're using outboard gear, then running a lower amount is probably okay. But if you rely on many VST instruments and virtual gear, you'll want as much as you can afford. My recommendation would be eight gig minimum for the outboard scenario, 16 for anything else. Don't think you can lowball the amount of RAM. You will not be happy. At the time of this recording, DDR4 is getting more and more mainstream with DDR3 still being the standard, Budget is the main consideration as right now the performance is close enough. Keep in mind compatibility with the motherboard you choose as well. Next up is the hard drive. Obviously total space is important, but write speed is one of the top considerations here. My suggestion would be to keep different hard drives for the operating system and the data. For your OS and or program installs, you, you will want an SSD. They've come down enough and have so much faster access that it is pretty much a requirement now. It is amazing the difference in processing speed for both read and write. For your data drive, you will want a minimum 7200 RPM drive and at least one terabyte. High quality lossless data at a high sample rate will start to add up quickly. Cases are the most visible part of the build, but it is not just the visual side. They will have a large impact on noise and access to your input outputs, depending on how you're connecting your audio interface. 
here's where you can save some money, but keep a couple of things in mind as you get cheaper. You want enough airflow to keep the system cool. As the hotter it runs, the higher the fans will spin, creating noise. I'll include the power supply here as well, as some cases will come with one. It is important to get good quality one, as this component can add noise again, and has the potential to toast all of the other components. Just like you want a power conditioner for your outboard gear, it is important to protect the brain of your studio. Generally, 600 watts will work, but if you are running higher power graphics cards, then you'll want to double check their power requirements. Your last consideration is going to be the graphics. If you're doing strictly music production, you can probably get away with onboard graphics. But if you are doing any video editing at all along with your music production, it won't be enough. Video editing rigs are an entirely different level and beyond the scope of this video, but keep in mind that if you're going to use your PC for things other than just music production, it is good to get a dedicated graphics card, so take a look. There are a ton of options for a wide range of prices. So now you have all the pieces to your home studio central command. It is time to put it together. I won't go into details here as there are so many good reasons for the actual act of building. I'll link some in the description below that I found useful. The main takeaway is that while it used to be a perilous journey from boxes to a running PC, assembling your own PC today is pretty much like putting together Legos. If you can run the cables to a mixer or set up a patch bay, you are more than capable of building a modern PC. A quick note on the peripherals. I'm assuming you already have a keyboard and mouse, as well as a video panel or monitor. I'm also assuming you have studio monitors or at least speakers and an audio interface, so I'm not including any of that in this list. I'm also assuming you have an operating system like Windows as well. Those are all discussions in and of themselves. I hope you find that this gives you an overview of where to start with a PC build, specifically for music production. If you find the process fun, there are many, many ways to take your setups to the next level and use your studio PC as artwork in and of itself. Take a look at the Battlestation subreddit if you don't believe me. But if you are starting out, look at function over form and use the modularity of the PC to make upgrades as you learn and have the budget. Lastly, manufacturers are always coming out with new gear, so I've tried to steer away from specific products except for what I currently own. A site, a site like PC Part Picker, which I'll link below, can help you see what other people are doing at the time you are actually doing your build, so it can help provide you a starting point. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.